Day 234. Today the Ukrainians finally launched their next wave of massive assaults in the Kherson region. The attack came from the northern group of forces, and many sources suggest that this was one of the most intense Ukrainian attacks. Russian independent media already raised the alarm, because apparently this is only the first wave, and the Ukrainians engaged only a fraction of their forces. Russian government officials are already fleeing Kherson. Such panic in the face of the attack is justified, and here is why. In order to conduct such a massive attack, the Ukrainians have been preparing for around a week. After establishing control over the northern group of settlements, the Ukrainians have been sending a lot of scout groups to find where the Russians are forming their defense line. To complement their on-the-ground efforts, the Ukrainians have also engaged many drones to collect intelligence from the air. Once this preparation stage was completed, the Ukrainians increased the intensity of their attacks by conducting combat reconnaissance. They pushed the Russians along the front line to test their fortifications and to find weak spots. In the meantime, the Ukrainians have been slowly gathering their machinery and moving it closer to the action. Around two days ago, the Ukrainians relocated many tanks and artillery to Petropavlivka and Chervone from the north and to Davidiv Brid from Bereznogovate. This was the first time when the Russian media sources raised the alarm about the imminent Ukrainian advance. Today at 5 a.m., the Ukrainians started their offensive with extensive artillery preparation. Russian sources reported that Ukrainian artillery has been covering the whole northern front from the area of Petropavlivka, exactly where they were relocated two days ago. The Ukrainians have reportedly conducted more than 110 fire missions to undermine Russian defense by damaging their defense infrastructure and supplies of gas, ammunition and food. The location of these targets has been identified during the preparation stage by conducting reconnaissance in the air and on the ground. The Ukrainians also engaged their aviation and conducted several airstrikes with the aim of destroying Russian air defense in the region. Immediately after the artillery preparation stopped, the Ukrainians opened two lines of attack in the direction of Milove and Suhanove. The attacks were launched from Novokamyanka because the Russians reportedly destroyed the bridge in Duchane. Some sources say that the Russians maintained some presence just to the south of Duchane to slow the Ukrainian advances. However, it seems like it did not work because the Ukrainians used at least 30 tanks and many more armored fighting vehicles to push the Russians out of this region. The morning reports indicated that the clashes were taking place between Polanka and Milove. Some Ukrainian fighters have already teased the public by saying that there are only four settlements away from Bereslav. This claim implies that the Ukrainians have successfully pushed the Russians at least out of Milove, but there has been no official confirmation yet. If this is true, then the Ukrainians have already cut the main road that was used to supply the Russians here. The Ukrainians have always been moving along the main supply roads from Bereslav, and successful advances here partially explain the rapid Russian collapse. So far, the Ukrainians have not launched their attack from Davidiv Brit, but it is clear that this will be the next major axis of advance. That is why despite reporting tough fights, Russian sources also cautioned their military to not get caught in the moment, because the Ukrainians are using only a fraction of their reserves and can open more lines of attack at any time. This is in line with what I told you yesterday. A successful advance from the Vodiv Brit will serve as a catalyst for the battle for Kherson, because it will set the conditions for the attack from Ternovi Pode, and the Ukrainians here have already pulled their reserves closer to the front line. Overall, the Ukrainians have identified three main areas where to strike. Right now they are not trying to storm Snihurivka or get closer to Kherson because it would be inefficient. Instead, the Ukrainians are building their tactics with the primary goal of shortening the front line, and a shorter front line will allow the Ukrainians to exploit their main advantage, manpower superiority. Some sources say that the Ukrainians engaged around 60,000 troops in the Kherson region. This is a very big number, and it explains why the Russians have already started evacuation in Kherson. However, they are not evacuating people, they're evacuating Russian government officials responsible for the Kherson region. Some reports suggest that the most important officials have already been evacuated to Henichesk. All of that signals that the Russians are not very confident in their defense.
If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.